career highlights have been many. I've been a milliner for 50 plus years and I did some big films. I did two Star Wars films. I did Moulin Rouge. On the stage, I've done Australia's big musicals, Aladdin, Frozen, My Fair Lady. I'm still working at 77. I have been truly blessed to have the life I had, have had and having. Millinery is something that I'm quite interested in as a field, and so I'm, I'm quite excited to kind of work with such an experienced costumer. A 19-year-old wanting to learn how to make hats is really wonderful. I'm hopefully working towards a career in the costume industry. It's really something that I enjoy, um, and hopefully it'll be something that I can find work in. If Kiralee's ages, she's in big trouble because she's going to have to learn to make something from an old man. Um, people have weird ideas around age meaning incompetence. And even, like, I catch myself thinking that sometimes you dive into an industry and then you kind of become an expert and then once you're about 50, you kind of just, like, drop off and disappear. But having um, so much industry experience, you are so knowledgeable. Hi, Kiralee. Hi, How are you? How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm, I'm very well. We're going to make a fabric hat today, and these are some examples of fabric hats, but we're actually going to make a summer hat. That's lovely. And so in order to do that, she needs to be able to sew on a machine and to be able to hand sew to finish the hat off. So these are the three pattern pieces that relate to that summer hat. You have to cut two brims, a side crown and a crown tip. People are born to do different things. My partner says I'm a frock fairy. <laughs> but I started work as a tailor in 1962. And then I was asked to make some hats for State Opera of South Australia. I came to Sydney in 1990 I've been making hats for many, many shows, many, many films. Earlier this century, I did a lot of shows last century. I've worked with some of the most amazing creative people on this planet. When you see the things that he's created, there's so much beautiful passion through a hat. So now we're going to sew up the centre back seam. Step one of making the brim. I'm studying at TAFE at the moment, currently doing a Diploma of Fashion Technology. I was always the weird kid who, like, when you're playing make-believe, I'm, like, really intricately describing the imaginary costume that my character is wearing. And, like, I've always loved seeing the finished product being created with your own two hands. It's such a satisfying feeling. Now we're going to press the brim. All right. And you can trim it away. All right, wonderful. What happens with lots of millinery, the, you actually create it in a three-dimensional way, so you think differently about it when you're creating it. Yeah, so that's really good. cool. What do I like about making hats? Sometimes I hate them. <laughs> yeah. Particularly when they're getting close to the end and you're going, why don't you just bloody go away? <laughs> now we have these wonderful things called quilters holding clip. But the act of creation is very therapeutic and everybody should have some kind of craft skills. It's making something. It takes you to a different place. Creative people have to create or we don't exist. We can do lots of other things, but as long as we're making something, we're happy. Yeah. yeah. So tell me about Moulin Rouge the film, because that's got some incredible headpieces in it. I was very spoiled. I got to make a couple of headdresses for Nicole Kidman. I made an Indian headpiece. Oh, it was shot from the front and then from behind with all this light coming through. It was just stunning. I hope I get to, like, do something like that in my career. That would, that's kind of the dream. Well, you've got 60 years, kiddo. <laughs> So. Well, hopefully that's enough time to work my way up. Yep, absolutely. And now we're going to go back to the sewing machine and then what we're going to do is we're going to sew these two lads together. Wonderful. Okay. So, Rick, what would you say is, like, your life philosophy? My life philosophy is that life is about a series of journeys. I grew up in a very working-class family in South Melbourne. I was... A strange child. I knew I was gay but didn't know how to say it. <laughs> I knew that I loved opera and I wanted fabulous things in my life. 
I was married to a wonderful woman for 10 years who got me into millinery. You do realise that all of those things that happen to you are the things that create who you are. And in those journeys, you meet people who come into your life to teach you a lesson or for you to teach them a lesson. And we're around. Ta-da! So now we've got to go back to the, to the ironing board and we're going to trim and clip this brim so that we can turn it back the other way to stitch it. So do you reckon that people, like, treat you differently in the industry because of your age? I've got a bit of a reputation that precedes me and so I'm generally treated with a bit of respect. I've had people look down their noses on me, at me on the dance floor because I wasn't 25. Dance has no age. And my reaction to that these days is, well, I hope you're still on the dance floor when you're 77. He really broke the narrative that we have built up. I really hope I'm as joyful with my life when I get to 77. What's it like for a young teenager growing up and going through adolescence? A lot of young people, including myself, feel like we need to, like, prove ourselves. In looking for jobs and everything, everyone wants to know what work experience you've had. And it's like, well, I don't have any work experience and I can't get any work experience because everyone wants me to already have work experience. I think he definitely taught me more than I taught him, but I did teach him some slang. Like, sometimes you just have to stay, like, a little, a little Delulu, you know? That's a word I've not come across. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> Please explain. It just means, like, delusional. Ah, like, uh, that word. You gotta pretend a little bit all the time. I think I've been to Lulu quite a lot in my life. Staying to Lulu is the Salulu. Always believe that if you say yes to something, somehow you find how to do it. But as soon as you say, no, I can't do it, you can't do it. Now we're going to sew up the crown. So first of all, you're going to sew the centre back. Talking to Rick today, I do feel like I'm a little bit braver going forward. I'm going to put a stay stitch in the crown so my stay stitch line will marry to Kira Lee's friction line to stitch the crown to the brim. This industry particularly can feel like it's very like unattainable, but I really think that this experience with Rick has helped me to kind of understand it's not as far away <laughs> as you might think. And then we're sewing the crown to the brim. The whole thing will come together like magic. Today was a lot of fun. It's always nice imparting knowledge. And then I'll pin the headlining in and then we'll sew it in. It's got to be slip stitched in by hand later. Kiralee was very eager to learn, has a really good idea of where she wants to go. So let's see what the hat looks like. Mm. So you can wear it with the brim out like this. I will absolutely be wearing the hat, like, all the time. Now that you've made a whole hat, you know how long they can take to make. Mm -hmm. And so you know how much love is actually in that. So hat. much love. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. In a world where so much manufacturing is outsourced and, and everything's automated, it's so cool to put something together with your own two little hands. It's exciting to see hats through the eyes of a young person, see the joy in it that you know is in it. It was so amazing to see him be so passionate about millinery. His words about looking back and not regretting the choices that you make because all the choices that you make lead you to where you are. Like, it was a really, really wise thing. I have been extremely blessed to work in an industry that has given me the greatest joy that any human could have. Not many people get the chance to do that. I hope that I can look back and be as happy with my life as he is with his.